So, um, here's Skype update number two. I'm going to try to make this brief. Thank you, Passive, for help, helping me focus on it. This is Julie Wolf. There's a picture of me because this is a Skype call with Patsy. And I just wanted to update her as one of my main uh, people, my VIP people, member of C1Skype.com. And, and uh, you're my virtual assistant, right, Patsy? Yes, <laughs> so the other update that I really should uh, let people know about Sorry I'm so late at making this announcement because it is March 4th, but now that Skype has forced us to be in a current version of Skype, you don't have to update if your version is 7.17 and above. Um, you can keep refusing if you want. I would back up your Skype um, and this is how I would do it. There's some things that I'm going to try to do really quickly and show you real quick. Um, if you go to your computer from your start menu, of course, I can't show you Mac and I can't show you mobile. Oh my God, I got to clean up my C drive. It's red. And you go to the Skype folder inside of, um, you see there's two program files folders. If you have two and one of them is x86, open that one. If you only have one, open the other one. Um, and look for that Skype folder. Before you update your Skype, make a backup of this Skype folder. And if you want to back up less, definitely make a backup of the phone folder. Okay, Th these are my backups of different Skype versions. They have all of the DLL uh, files that are needed now. Used to be you only needed the Skype.exe in older versions, but now there's all these .dll files that are necessary for each version. So if you don't want to back up the Skype folder, at least back up the phone folder and make a copy of it and then put the version number after it. And that way you can always have access to that version as long as it's 7.17 or 1.8 or above as of this date, which is after March 1st. Microsoft has now forced us all to update our Skypes if our Skypes were versions were below 7.16 or below. So there's a visual on that. So now that they've made that change, they're probably forcing some of you to do things like log in on web Skype, log in from the browser, and that's going to do another thing that is not too late for me to tell you about. It's really, really important that you figure out how to safely um, and under your control link your Skype account to a Microsoft account that you create, not one that they force you to create. All Skype accounts um, will be forced to be linked to a Microsoft account. Yes, Microsoft owns Skype. If you didn't know, they purchased it in 2011 for a lot of money. And now they're finally, the last couple of years, especially this last year, uh, 2016 and now definitely in 2017 they're making major 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 changes um, to change Skype to totally a cloud infrastructure cloud platform from the old version P2P um, type technology that it was running on. So because they're going to force us to link our Skype accounts to Microsoft accounts it's important that you follow these steps. Make a Microsoft account where a Gmail account or a non-Microsoft account Gmail email account, non-Microsoft email, so not .msn, not .live.com, not .outlook, at outlook.com, not at any Microsoft uh, domain. MSN is Microsoft. Um, Cyber something is Microsoft. I forget what that one is called. Live, Outlook. What are some of the other ones? Can you think of any other? and live.com right so don't get don't use one of the email accounts from Microsoft unless you've set up security so there's a couple of things that are really important for me to tell you now before it's too late one is if you do have a Microsoft account um, make sure that it is not already linked to your Skype account link it to the Skype account you want but only after you've added security to your Microsoft account. So um, people are getting locked out of their Microsoft accounts and if that is linked to a Skype account 
You know what that means. <laughs> yeah. To get the word out. Right. Oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe I will. Maybe I'll put a video pal on top of the video. <laughs> That'd be fun. Turn this into a video pal. <laughs> anyway, so. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, I'm going to show you an example of one. I'm in a mastermind room. If I haven't left it. Um, where's the word blogger? And this is already happening. It's already starting to happen. It's been happening, but um, let's see if I can find this. In this Skype room right here, it's private. Don't ask to join it. It doesn't belong to me. <laughs> um, oh, am I not sharing my screen? Okay, let me stop sharing and then start sharing with you again. Where are you? You're on my Skype call. Here we go, start sharing. There we go, start. Okay, so there's my list. I'm going to back up in XSky, with XSky, not in XSky. Okay, so this Skype room. This person, um, said, grrr, stupid Microsoft suspended my account, but they can't tell me why. I'm not surprised. It's either from, quote, sending spam or, quote, breaking terms and conditions. This is what they're, you know, the automated messages are telling her. Considering I haven't done anything, I have no idea how either one would apply. <laughs> right. I mean, people are shutting down. I mean, Skype, sorry, Microsoft is shutting down Outlook accounts and other uh, Microsoft accounts. Um, for things like logging in on your mobile phone from a different IP address. I mean, logging in to a computer on a different IP address. Um, and it shouldn't do it for mobile phones, but there's just, it's happening so much. You create an Outlook account or you create a Skype account, then you can't get into it because it's a Microsoft account. Because they've shut you down for who knows. I mean, it's happened to me a bunch of times. Some of them I've recovered just as an experiment. But um, this is what I've been warning everybody about. These are the steps to take to be proactive. Um, right. So you need to add security, which means add emails and phone numbers to your Microsoft account. The Microsoft account login, that's number one. Number two, the Microsoft account login, let me go back to you. Stop showing this one. And I'll show a picture of me there. Um, Number one is create a Microsoft account with where the login username is, for example, a Gmail account. That's just an example of not using an email account that is a Microsoft email that can be shut down. That's number one, is make sure that a Microsoft account can be logged in with a non-Microsoft email. You log in with an email. That's the username is an email address. So not a Microsoft email, like a Gmail would be perfect. So create a Microsoft account with a Gmail, for example. Add sec yeah. In other words, your own domain. Yeah, that is a good question. Yeah. Oh, I see. In your own, on your own ISP. I, I do, you know, I don't see why not. Like if you own a domain or you have an inter internet service provider like Time Warner or whatever it is, Verizon or Quest, or we don't have Quest anymore, but what are we now? Right. Your own is a better choice, but I did have one yeah, if you switch service providers, then you could be lose access. You want to be able to have access to it. Gmail, you can set up um, 
uh, security verification so you can always regain it if you lose it. Your own domain, of course, you can always access, so that should be safe. Now, for some reason I do not understand, one of the supervisors at Skype told me that uh, in regards to linking your Microsoft to your Skype, that you want to use a, 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 free, a free email account like Gmail or Yahoo or she even suggested a Microsoft account, but I don't recommend that. I don't know why she would recommend Gmail and she specifically said not your own domain, but I can't see why. You know, it's like you have control over your own domain. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Right. Yes, that's what they said. Well, that's to to create a Microsoft account with the username being an email address that is a Gmail, not your own domain. That's their suggestion. I don't understand it. It's probably their uneducated suggestion. Thank you. Um, so I would say if you've got an email address with your own domain, that would be the safest. But Gmail, if you set up security to recover your Gmail, should be fine too. So number one, create a Microsoft account. I'm going to try to go through this quickly to make this less than... <laughs> I'm trying to make it short, a short video. So uh, number one, create a Microsoft account with a non-Gmail, uh, sorry, a non-Microsoft email address. The Microsoft account should not be, have, uh, be created with a Microsoft email address as the primary alias. They said Gmail's fine as long as you set it up with your Gmail with recovery security, that's fine. Um, and uh, of course your own domain would be best. So number two, that's creating a Microsoft account with a email account, right, that you can control. The number two is to add security to that Microsoft account, which means if you don't know how, come and find out, get, you know, find out, go to Microsoft support, chat, if you, whatever you need to do, come to me, set up a Skype strategy session, and I need to do a video on that, how to do that, how to add security. That means the same thing you've done to secure your Gmail, you need to also secure your Microsoft account with other ways of proving that the account is yours. For example, mobile phones, landlines, and other email addresses should be added as added security to prove that the account is yours so you can recover it. And lastly, you can link a standalone Skype account that is not attached yet to any Microsoft account to that Microsoft account that you just created. Those are the three steps. So if you have any questions, anybody about that, leave me comments under the video. Come and set up a Skype strategy session with me from inside as a member of mine at CU on skype.com. Any other questions, Patsy? No. Just, just make this a movement and spread it around, huh? <laughs> Would be a good idea. Yeah, they're fun. Right. Maybe I'll make a blog post and add the video pal to this and add the video to, to the blog post. That'd be good. That'd be good. So um, the, the, the other last most important thing is that they did tell me at the end of 2016 when I was doing a lot of Skype and Microsoft recoveries, um, and it wasn't from Skype hacks, it was from Microsoft shutting down accounts for no good reason. Um, or people having trouble logging in or changing their age or updating their Skype, you know, for example, that's why we started part one's update about updating your Skype. Um, they did tell me that they've got the majority of Skype accounts um, already linked to Microsoft accounts and that that's their goal. And they will eventually force, just like they forced a couple days ago, March 1st or 2nd, they forced an update of Skype versions. They will eventually force 
all remaining standalone Skype accounts to be linked to Microsoft accounts. So this isn't like just extra techie stuff work for anyone to do. If you need help, get somebody to remote control and do it in your computer for you with you Team Viewer or whatever. Set up a Skype strategy session with me if you're a member of mine at co1skype.com. But uh, get it done. Correctly and safely link your Skype accounts to a Microsoft account that you can control. That's the, the big message. Okay, thanks Patsy for helping me focus on that and promote this. And I'm going to end this one. Thanks for watching everybody. Stick around, Patsy.